Hello, my name is Ashley, and in this short presentation, I will discuss Guanyin's artistic presence in Ming Dynasty China, both in public and private spaces. I've chosen Guanyin due to her monumental role as China's most popular female Buddhist deity, as well as her long-lasting presence in Chinese religious art. In alignment with these themes, I will approach each piece with the question of whether or not it was intended for a public audience, a private audience, or perhaps even both when applied to different contexts. First, we must ask, who is Guanyin? Guanyin, whose name means perceiver of sounds, is China's most popular bodhisattva. She is the Chinese equivalent of the Mahayana Buddhist Bodhisattva of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, who originated in India before Buddhism spread to China. In Buddhism, bodhisattvas are beings who, after many rebirths, have finally achieved the level of Buddhahood and are allowed to escape the cycle of suffering in which humans are trapped. However, instead, bodhisattvas choose to be reborn as humans to help others onto the path towards enlightenment. Originally a male deity, Avilokiteshvara quickly became popular with early Buddhist laypeople, and his popularity grew in China, especially after the first two translations of the Buddhist text the Lotus Sutra, which described at length Guanyin's ability to save worshippers from otherwise helpless situations. Guanyin began appearing in Buddhist art at least as early as the Northern Qi period, and over the next millennium appeared in female form with increasing frequency, especially from around the Tang to Sung periods. While we do know the general pattern of when and how Guanyin became depicted in female form in Chinese art, there is no definitive answer as to why this gender shift occurred. The most popular theory is that in Chinese culture, along with many others, compassion and forgiveness are viewed as feminine, often motherly qualities. The more popular Guanyin grew in China, the more artistic forms she took, including Guanyin of the South Sea, Guanyin, bringer of sons, the fish basket Guanyin, and perhaps most commonly, the white robed Guanyin. Although Guanyin would become overwhelmingly feminine in Chinese society, she did still sometimes continue to appear in male form, even through the Ming Dynasty. While Buddhist temples were an obvious location for Guanyin worship, the market for artworks of Guanyin was vast and women dominated by the Ming Dynasty. Women were major consumers of Guanyin art and in some instances, there were female artists selling to fellow women. During the Ming Dynasty, lay women of various social spheres turned to Guanyin and Buddhism in response to Neo-Confucian ideals they observed in other areas of life, particularly at court or at home, where women had familial duties to sons, husbands, and fathers. Guanyin, while she did exist outside of the home in temples, offered women an introspective and private form of contemplation and worship, distinct from their outward Neo-Confucian practices. By the Ming Dynasty, Guanyin had firmly cemented presences both in public and private spaces. I will now move on to some artistic examples. Guanyin and the 16 Luohans is a Ming round fan, mounted as an album leaf, suggesting that it was taken from an album, and therefore would have been viewed in private settings. The scene depicts Luohans, or Arhats, worshipping Guanyin, who looks down compassionately at them from the top of Mount Putuo, a Chinese island historically famous for attracting devout Guanyin worshippers, especially women. Here, Guanyin possesses a number of characteristic Avilokiteshvara features, including beauty lines on her neck, what appears to be a Buddha Amitabha in her headdress, draped robes, a water jar by her side, and the presence of a pilgrim to her left. The scenery also includes other Chinese auspicious features, including clouds and a dragon. While the depiction itself is not of a strictly private scene, this artwork would not have been viewed by large groups, given that it is an album leaf. Next, we have Guanyin as the Nine Lotus Bodhisattva. For this drastically different example, the Buddhist Ming Empress Dowager Su Shang commissioned a painting of herself as Guanyin, after nine lotus flowers had double bloomed at the imperial palace in 1586, as lotuses were symbols closely associated with Avalokiteshvara. As with the last piece, Guanyin can easily be identified by her robes, beauty lines, Amitabha in the headdress, presence of the pilgrim, and of course, the many lotuses. Given that this was a court commission, it's very likely the piece was at least sometimes viewed publicly. 
Lastly, I will show several images of what were often considered the most private category of Guanyin pieces, Song Shi, or Guanyin as the bringer of sons. Guanyin's representation as a motherly figure meant that young parents, particularly mothers, would often pray to her for healthy offspring. Images of Song Shi were frequently produced during the Ming Dynasty and increased in popularity as Catholic missionaries arrived in China and likened Song Shi figures to the Virgin Mary, often resulting in hybrid artistic styles, as seen in the painting on this slide. These Guanyin figures still displayed many markers of Guanyin and were produced in a range of media, such as paintings, ceramics, ivory sculptures, and beyond the visual arts into literature and even drama. Here are two such examples of Song Shi figurines. These have demonstrated the wide array of Guanyin artistic practices and the role that she played in public and private spaces, especially to female audiences. And lastly, here are some sources that I used for your reference. Thank you so much for listening.